Alright, so hello everyone and welcome back to another fan deck showcase. Um, I don't know, I, th I think it's the fifth one or something like that. Um, this one we will look at probably the most complicated deck I have ever made, which is um, Uta from One Piece Film Red. Um, as you see, there is a long rules card, so bear with me, we will have a bit to read um, <laughs> and some stuff to understand. But let's start with the basic stuff. Uta is a ranged fighter, 15 health, move 3. She has pirates as sidekicks. They are 1 health sidekicks, there are 4 of them, and they are all melee. Now, her ability is the voice of heaven. At the start of your turn, take control of all pirates in your zone. At the end of your turn, lose control of every pirate that is not in your zone. They get controlled by the nearest opposing fighter. Uh, so that might be very confusing for you, but let's uh, read the rules card a bit, okay? Uta's Pirates. Pirates are neutral fighters. They start the game in control of any opponent, you can choose which, um, place the three pirate decks over the board so every player can reach them. At the start of the game, place all four pirates in any spaces that share no zones with other fighters except pirates. Whenever a pirate attacks or defends, draw the top card of the attack or defend deck. You may draw from the versatile deck instead. Effects on pirate cards cannot be cancelled. Okay, so, neutral fighters. What the hell did I cook? <laughs> um, basically, the pirates are pirates, so they don't have a set loyalty to you or the opponent or whoever. Um, they will basically swap the whole time. And as the rules card already indicated, they have their own separate decks. Um, the pirate decks kind of work like the unmatched adventures, um, villains or um, minions decks, where they infinitely recur themselves and you resolve them the same way. Now, the interesting thing about this is, since the pirates of course have their own decks, if they are in your control, you can still attack with them um, and still move them as if they were your own sidekicks, when they're under your control. So the good thing you can do is maybe you maneuver and then attack with a pirate, but that of course doesn't use your own cards, um, but more so a pirate card, and then the opponent has to defend against that or take damage. So you're gaining extra value just by utilizing these pirates. Um, but then, again, Uda's ability of course lets her take control of pirates in her zone, um, which is quite important because of course at the start of the game in a one v one, at least your opponent will have the control about about um, all the pirates. So, yeah. Um, and then at the end of your turn, you lose control of all pirates that are not in your zone. So it's very dependent on positioning, where you put them, when to engage, um, when you actually engage with your own hero. Um, same also for the opponent, um, if they approach themselves um, or with the pirates, because then if the pirates are in the zone, she will get them. Um, and it's kind of this back and forth where you both play with, basically, um, well, you both play your heroes and then there's like this neutral deck that both of you can use um, or just not use. And, as the rules card says, um, there are three different pirate decks. There's an attack only deck, there's a defense only deck and a versatile deck, which means Whenever the pirates attack, you can choose whether to use the top card of the attack deck or of the uh, versatile deck. You don't know which card that is earlier, because the cards are still shuffled and face down, um, just like with the unmatched adventures, um, villains or minions. So sometimes, since there are some good and some bad cards, you um, might want to either shift to attacking with the attack deck or to the versatile deck. Um, because they, of course, have different functions and different cards, and if you know that, um, yeah, you'll probably aim for one that you want. Um, and same on defense, you can choose whether a pirate defends at all, if he defends with a uh, defense deck card or with a versatile deck card. So, yeah, it's a lot to do, but before we jump into Uta's own cards, I think it's better that we take a look at the pirate decks and just uh, look what they actually do, because, uh, I mean, it's our whole ability, right? So they're pretty damn important. Okay, so let's start with the attack deck. Um, all pirate decks are built similar. Um, they all have three two-copy cards and then one one-copy card. Um, let's start with 
the simplest one. We have just a print four value attack in the attack deck, which is murder, has boost value of two, and uh, well, two copies, of course. No effect, so there's nothing to be cancelled, but again, pirates' effects cannot be cancelled, so yeah, it wouldn't matter anyways. Um, it's just a print for attack, that is of course really, really good. Getting a print for attack basically for free just by attacking with a pirate um, can be really strong. That usually will deal one damage or force, force a max value block from your opponent, so pretty, pretty strong. Then next up we have print one value attack with a boost value of three. Um, two copies, of course, it is Rob, and it says after combat your opponent discards a random card. Now, that of course is insanely strong because pirate effects cannot be cancelled. So you'll get free random discards if you manage to pull this card. Um, so yeah, holy, that is... Uh, that is extra sad for the opponent because maybe they expected something like a murder um, blocked with maybe a skirmish with just a print for versatile and then it was actually this card and then they wasted that skirmish and also have to discard a random card. So, ouch, ouch. You see there's a lot of value to be used when uh, getting with these pirates. But then, like I said, there are also some bad cards maybe. Um, so let's get into the next one. It's a print three value attack. Uh, boost value of one, two copies. It is drink. After combat, discard a card. Draw cards equal to the boost value of the discarded card. So, yeah, you read that right. You yourself discard a card if you play that. That is not great. Losing value is oh, ouch. It's kind of similar to the um, Moon Knight card, um, the print one, which is basically the worst card in all of our match. Just that. With this, at least you get to choose which card you discard from your hand, whereas Moon Knight just discards the top card of your deck. So, usually you will discard a 1 or a 2 boost card that you don't like to have, and then you draw 1 or 2 cards. Sure, it can be nice to draw a bit more cards, but just discarding a card is not great. Um, and it's just on a print 3 attack, so it usually won't deal that much damage. And again, since the effect is uncancelable, this will always happen, and that is really, really bad for you. Um... So, there's always kind of like this mind game with the attacking deck, because, I mean, yeah, Murder and Rob are really, really strong. Um, especially if you get them in a good situation, like, they give, they add so much value to your play. But if you pull something like Drink, well, ah, damn, you, you just cry. <laughs> it's really not good. Um, so, yeah, any way to influence the deck to kind of... Uh, know when which card is coming will be really crucial for you to avoid this because of course the attacking deck will probably be the best for attacks but um, then you have drink in there which might punish you so if you somehow get some kind of control over this that might be quite good and then the last one is a print zero attack boost layer four um, one copy it is freedom it says once this card is in the attack discard pile shuffle all cards from the discard pile back into the deck and after combat, this got uh, deal two damage to the opposing fighter. So it's just a print zero that will just always deal two damage, which is really good, of course, because it's uncancelable. That's free auto damage, and this is also kind of like the deception card um, for the pirates. All cards, all pirates have this. All decks have this card or kind of similar. Um, the attacking, of course, deals two damage. The other ones will have some different effects. Um, and yeah, once this card gets pulled and then is in this card pile. All the cards in this card pile get shuffled back, so you kind of have an infinite deck out of these cards so that the pirates don't run out of steam. Um, but yeah, the attacking deck is really polarizing because technically five out of the seven cards are really, really good because, I mean, even freedom, it's just two free auto damage. Sure, you shuffle the deck again, but who cares? It's two free auto damage. But then you could also like pull the bad block and get drink, and that's just so bad for you value-wise that Often, if you don't know what's coming up on, up on the attack deck, it's a better idea just not to use it, because it can be a very hard punish. Um, but we'll see what tools you might have to maybe um, adjust that and actually uh, see what you're doing here. But now, let's jump into the next one, um, probably the Versatile deck. Alright, so here we are on the Pirate's Versatile deck. Um, as you see, it's full of versatile cards. So this is the deck that you can always use, whether the, pir whether the pirates are attacking or defending. So it's not really built to deal damage or to like defend them. Well, it's just kind of like quality of life effects in between. Um, the first one is a three-value versatile 
Booster Wave 2, two copies. It's Showdown, and it says after combat you may draw one card. It's just a pretty basic card overall. Um, three value versatile. I mean, probably won't deal any damage, but that's not really the purpose of the pirates. If you're attacking with them, you just want to waste your opponent's cards, and for that, this card is still pretty good because if they defend too low, it will still still uh, deal the chip damage, and um, if they didn't, well, it's three, it's so undefended. That will still be quite a nice hit. Um, and if they did defend, well, that's a card from them gone, and that's what you use the pirates for. And then after combat, you may draw one card. That's of course quite nice. Um, if you just want to like get your hand up, it's also optional. So yeah, that's quite good for you. Um, if you maybe got pressured a bit and then had to hide behind your pirates, um, if you hit this um, on the attack, well, you don't have to maneuver again because you can just draw one card normally. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's just a, quite the quality of life effect. Um, then we get another print one versatile. Um, Bruce A1, two copies. Um, it is the final blow. Immediately, you may deal one damage to each opposing fighter in your zone. So, this effect is immediate, which is usually huh, weird. Um, because usually, like, ping damage effects are after combat. But this basically means that this is one guaranteed auto damage whenever you play this. If you want to play it, because sometimes opposing opposing fighter in your zone could also be like enemy pirates that are controlled by them, and maybe you plan to take control of them next turn. Um, and it's just good to have the option. Maybe, maybe if you're fighting Achilles, you may not want to deal the one damage each time, so you're not forced to do anything. Um, but still, one ping can be nice. And again, purpose of the pirates is to get rid of block cards from your opponent, so you can hit hard later yourself. Um, because they themselves won't really deal that much damage, it's just about value um, and actually controlling the battlefield and your opponent's moves, so even that it's just a print one, yeah, it's it's okay. And the good thing is it will also deal the one ping on defense before the pirate actually dies, because, I mean, usually the pirate will die from a uh, from defending with a uh, print one, so uh, yeah. And then we get a print two value versatile, Two boosts, um, two copies, it is gather, after combat, move each pirate up to three spaces. Um, this one is quite nice, I mean, it's only print two, again, probably a bait attack, but it is quite cool because maybe if you're playing this yourself as Uta and you had to move out of your own zone with a pirate, so at the end of your turn, um, since the pirate wouldn't be in your zone, uh, it would fall under the opponent's control. Um, that, of course, wouldn't be great, but with this card, for example, if you manage to pull this, you can move the pirate back three spaces into your zone after combat, so it's quite nice for that. Also, it's good for repositioning purposes. Um, maybe if you're defending with this um, and then the pirate died, um, you can move a different one in its place to double attack um, on the next turn, so it's just, just really a versatile card overall for the pirates. Um, and yeah, you don't really complain about it. Again, the versatile deck is just that versatile and it's just quality of life effects. Except for the last one. Um, we have again a zero value, this time versatile of course. Um, Boost value 4, it is again freedom, but diff this time it's the versatile freedom. So again, once this card is in the versatile discard pile, shuffle all cards from the discard pile back into the deck. But then the after combat is draw three cards. Now, that draw three cards is not optional. You have to draw all three. And that can, of course, be quite a detriment to you, because if you're at a too high hand count, uh, maybe at five or higher, and you attack with this, well, you draw three and you overdraw, and then you'll have to discard some. So, ideally, you always attack with the versatile deck while you have four or less cards in your hand, which is, of course, quite risky. Um, sure, you get a lot of quality of life effects, but at least then you're um, also not overdrawing if you actually pull this. But you're at four or lower cards, so you might not have too many great defenses or defensive options. But at the same time, since you're in control of at least one pirate, you have some options to body block. But yeah, that's definitely one thing that you want to do. Usually, I think the versatile deck is just the most consistent deck overall. Um, but you definitely don't want to get uh, punished by the draw three out of nowhere. Um, and again, if you manage to look at the deck somehow and maybe rearrange some stuff and know when this is coming, I mean, 
yeah, sure, then you can just play your normal game with high hand count and then just go low once this card is coming. But usually, if you don't have an idea, yeah, it's a 1 in 7 chance, but at the same time, it would be quite a hard punish. So usually you want to be, I mean, maybe at 5 cards can also work, um, but not really higher than that. But yeah, versatile deck is just, like it says, versatile. So if you don't want to take the risk of a, um, maybe a drink from um, the attack deck, I think the versatile one is always a good option. But now let's go over to the defense deck. Okay, so here we are on the Pirates Defense deck. Um, this one is built quite similar to um, the attacking one, where at the start we have a just print four block, no text. That's pretty good. Like survivability wise, the Pirates withstanding a print four is definitely pretty good. Um, it's also quite important because many of the um, Newer effects have uh, had some kind of four value attack um, where it says if you won the combat you do that and that maybe still standing from Luke or whatever and of course with the versatile deck you can't counter that so the opponent would be able to just farm still standings on the pirates. With this not so much because you have two print four blocks over here sure it's a bit inconsistent but as we'll see you have another option um, to deal with that. Um, so just having the option to block for four with them is quite good to prevent such effects. Um, and I mean, it's really good for survivability because, I mean, if the opponent attack with a five or higher into a pirate, I think you're still fine with that because, yeah, uh, they used one of their biggest attacks onto a one health sidekick. Um, so yeah, usually the pirate will stay alive from this, except if it's like some kind of after combat ping effect, which would of course feel a bit bad, but again, it's not your own cards that you're using, um, so it wouldn't be that sad for you. Um, then next card we have Sail, which is a print 2 value defense, um, 2 boost, 2 copies, it says after combat, each friendly fighter in your zone recovers 1 health. Now, that might sound quite good, but again, that's this time an after combat effect. So if the pirate actually dies while defending with this, um, maybe the opponent just attacked with a 3 of some kind, um, the pirate is already dead, so there will be no friendly fighter in his zone. So yeah, this can be quite the nice healing um, for Uta herself. I mean, in that case, she would only heal one because as Uta, you of course don't have multiple fighters that could heal only yourself. Um, I think this card more so benefits the opponent usually because they might have um, a sidekick or maybe even if they're playing Yen, uh, three characters that can heal or Oda or whatever. Um, but again, the healing is not that likely to trigger. It's probably the weakest pirate card overall, just well, you guys. Yeah, sure, drink can be quite bad uh, because you discard something, but this card is basically just a blank two most of the times. Um, so yeah, it's a bit useless, but again, you have to have some bad cards in each of the decks, <laughs> otherwise that would just be insanely busted. Um, and then we get to the last normal card, which is a print one block for the pirates, a boost three of three, two copies, it just help, and it says immediately cancel all effects on your opponent's card. So, like I said before, um, you don't have only one option with C, maybe, um, to block those still standing effects. You also have cancels in the pirate deck. Sure, they are print one, so the pirate will basically always die, but just having the option to cancel effects so that the opponent cannot just farm them. Um, on the pirates is pretty good. Sure, it's a 2 in 7 chance, but again, otherwise I think it would be a bit too unfair if you just always cancel the effects of the opponent. Um, so, yeah. Um, decent card. It's probably just there to cancel, um, because the pirate will just die. So, if you're not really scared of any of the effects, I think defending with the versatile deck will usually be better, but if you're afraid of any really strong effect or, like, something that requires if you want the combat I think the defense tank is your most reliable option to actually deny that and then of course we get to freedom again um, zero value block uh, four boost value one copy um, once this card is in the defense discard pile shuffle all cards from the discard pile back into the deck and after combat one of your fighters recovers two health now that one in comparison to sale is not conditional on being in the zone it's just 
One of your fighters recovers two health, for Uta that will always be Uta, so you just heal two for free. And for the opponent, they can choose which of their fighters, so it can be quite nice healing for a psychic or hero or whatever. Um, so yeah, pretty strong card, free two healing, um, you always like that. And then just it recurs again, so yeah. Okay, so now we know what the pirate cards actually do, which deck is uh, kind of doing which effects or whatever. Let's start jumping into Uta's own cards. Uh, we already spent like 20 minutes, almost like the whole time that I spent for the other uh, videos on the decks, just uh, discussing about the extra separate mechanics here. So yeah, let's let's jump into the actual deck. Oh, we have a print 7 value attack. Holy. For Uta herself, of course, all the cards in the deck are Uta only, because of course the pirates can't use them because they're of their own deck. Um, Bullswayer 4, 3 copies, it is Tote Musica. This card's effects cannot be cancelled. Immediately, take 2 damage. During combat, the value of this card decreases by 1 for each pirate in your opponent's control. Alright, so print 7 value attacks are of course insanely strong. Like, holy, that is, that is so big. Like, Oxform, Witness... But they always kind of have some bad effects on them, where on Ox from the opponent can boost against it, and Witness has to be played adjacent as a ranged fighter, and it also ends the turn. This one is quite similar. Effects, again, cannot be cancelled, um, as on Oxform, and immediately you take 2 damage. So, 2 self damage is not great. You only have 15 health, um, and like, yeah, you have a bit of healing, but the best thing is, of course, you have your pirates. If you manage to, um, play them well and like the opponent so they soak up a lot of, a lot of damage from the opponent you get some heal triggers from maybe the freedom on defense um i think then this self damage isn't that important um but if you don't and you play all three of this that's six total self damage um sure it's for print seven value attacks and they will usually yield more than two damage so it will still be a pro positive trade for you but um you have to have quite the good idea of how your health is looking at the point, um, what the opponent still has left for scary damage cards, so yeah, it will always be kind of a risk. And then a during combat effect, um, decreasing by one for each pirate in your opponent's control. Um, I mean, you can still probably play this as a 6, I think it will still be fine. If we go from 5 or downwards, I think this will be really horrible. Technically the opponent can have up to 4 pirates in their control, of course, so uh, yeah, this could be a 3 value attack that where you take 2 damage yourself, but it, of course optimally you play this when you yourself have all the pirates in your control. One thing also to note, if all the pirates are dead, there is of course also no pirate in your opponent's control, so then this also will be a 7. Um, so it might be an idea just to kill them all off, just to not have to deal with them. Of course you, you benefit from them a lot more just due to your other card effects than the opponent does. But it might be an idea just to get the juicy finisher with Tilt Musica here. And then we have a 3 value attack. Booster of 3, 3 copies, it's backlight. After combat, choose a different effect for each pirate in your control. Draw a card, do you want damage to the opposing oops, <laughs> do you want damage to the opposing fighter? <laughs> Recover one health, or move Uta up to three spaces. Okay, so uh, that's of course pretty interesting. You technically have four pirates, so you could get all four of these effects, which in that case this card is really strong. It would be basically a three value attack that draws one, heals one, deals one damage, and moves up to three spaces. So if we kind of translate that, a four value attack basically that moves you three spaces, you draw a card and heal one, so holy, that's insane value. But usually... Um, you only have like two or three of them max, maybe even only one. And in that case, of course, you have to decide which combination you want. You cannot choose the same effect twice because you have to choose different ones each time. Um, but yeah, it's still quite the versatile card. It can do quite everything in the given situation um, that you want. So yeah, um, pretty good card overall. Quite nice to throw, and since you're ranged, you're not so much in danger whenever you play this. And even if so, you can just move the three spaces after that. So yeah. And then we get to a print four value attack, three copies again, two boost value. It's fleeting lullaby. Um, after combat, take control of one pirate. Then look at the top three cards of any deck. You may rearrange them in any order. So four value attacks on their own are already quite good. 
Um, after combat, just taking control of one pirate is quite nice. If you attack with its first action, you can maybe snitch a pirate that the opponent was hiding behind them and then just maneuver so it also ends in your zone. Of course, if you attack with a second action, um, and then take control of one pirate that's not in your zone. Well, it won't do much because at the end of your turn you'll just lose him again. But yeah, as a first action this is quite good. But I think why you play this card is always the look at top three cards. Um, in fact, because of course it's a, of any deck. So you can also look at the top three cards of a pirate deck. Which, as I hinted before um, in the uh, attack and versatile decks, can be quite important because there are some specific cards that you really don't want to have. Um, also... You can maybe play this to put those bad cards on top if the opponent has control of the pirates right now. So maybe they draw into them and then they have to discard cards or overdraw or whatever. Um, so it's really good to get that extra knowledge on what actually is coming up on the pirate decks. Um, because, yeah, they are so polarizing um, depending on what you do with them. So, yeah, pretty good card. Um, definitely helps you a lot in your game plan. Then we go into the versatile cards. First of all, we have a print three versatile, boost value one, three copies. It's the world's continuation. After combat, we move each fighter on the board up to three spaces. Now, that's some insane mobility. Like, each fighter on the whole board, which will usually be at least one with Uta, one from the opposing hero, and then up to four pirates, so that's six fighters, and maybe a psychic from the opponent, but let, let's say it's just six fighters. You can move six fighters up to three spaces. Holy! <laughs> that's some really good movement. And, of course, one of the best uses for this card is on defense. Um, When the opponent attack you with their second action, you can move each pirate in your zone, and then at the start of your turn, of course, take control of all of them, because, again, the pirates start in the control of your opponent, so somehow you'll have to get them back. And this is one of your best ways to do that, because, of course, they only have you as a target to attack with at the start, so they'll have to attack you at some point, and then you can just play this, maybe move all of the pirates into your zone. If they're positioned well, you might not be able to get all of them, but, again, it's quite a good card to just get your positioning right, um, so you actually get your pirates, um, because, of course, you need them. Because this deck is, of course, balanced around having them. Um, so, yeah, pretty good card overall. I mean, it's only a three-value block, so you'll take a bit of damage over it. But I think it's definitely worth just to get those pirates going. And then we get into a two-value versatile. Boost value two, three copies. It is New Genesis. Um, immediately, cancel all effects on your opponent's card. During combat, you may lend your opponent control of two pirates to ignore the value of their card. So... On its own already, cancel. Nice to see. We always love to see your good old faint basically card. Um, now the during combat effect is quite interesting because giving the opponent control of two pirates can be quite bad for you. Um, of course, you first of all have to have two pirates in your control to actually give them to your opponent to actually trigger this effect, so it cannot work um, if you only have one or none of them. Um, but then... Ignoring the value of their card, I mean, yeah, it can really help you, maybe to deal 2 damage on attack, but probably more so to ignore a, maybe, lock from Bigfoot on defense. Because the good thing is, um, if the pirates were in your zone, because usually they were, because otherwise they would be in the opponent's control anyways, um, you can lend them to the opponent with this, ignore their value, and then at the start of your turn, if it was the second action, just take control of them again. So... Of course, it's quite conditional with the setup, how you do it, but um, it can definitely well work out quite well. In that case, it's a really good block. Um, but other than that, if you don't manage to do that setup, I think giving two pirates to the opponent just to ignore their value is not that great of a deal, because let, let's think about it like this. Sure, you're giving two pirates to them to basically ignore one of their cards, but if you have the two pirates on yourself they will get attacked at some point, and then you're basically wasting two cards of the opponent without playing any of yours and not taking damage. So I think it's a better trade to just keep them yourself, um, except if you would die otherwise, of course. Um, except, of course, in the one scenario where you play this as a second action defense against them, um, and then can just get the pirates back instantly at the start of your turn. Well, of course, the opponent will play around that and probably not attack you with their biggest thing um, as second action if they know this card is online. But yeah, still 
even if you don't get the during combat, it's still nice to have a cancel in the deck, and you definitely appreciate it. Then let's get into another three value versatile booster wave one, three copies it is, where the wind blows. After combat, draw two cards. Place a defeated pirate, if any, in a space in the opposing fighter's zone. It starts under their control. Okay, so drawing two cards on your own is already quite good. Um, next to uh, uh, Backlight, I think this is your only draw on a actual combat card. Sure, you have the pirates, but maybe you don't get that draw card, so just having draw on your own is quite nice. Although, this draw is mandatory. So, um, sometimes you might not want to play this, just because you have to draw the two cards. I mean, two isn't that big of a deal, because you also spent this card yourself, um, so you lost one, and usually you play this on defense. But... Um, so there might be some situations where you don't like it. Um, then you place a defeated pirate in a space in the opposing fighter's zone. Um, I mean, it starts under their control, so just getting pirates back is an interesting thing, because if they start under your opponent's control and you cannot get them back, it's of course a bad thing to just give them additional one health sidekicks, but if you have maybe some, some good options to retake them, um, maybe with something like World's Continuation, or a different card that we'll see later, um, it might still be a good thing. And, again, if you play this on defense, second action, and you place the pirate in the opponent's zone, um, there's a high chance that you can place it in a way that it also is in your zone, then at the start of your turn you will instantly take control of it. So, yeah. Um, you see a trend with this deck where your defenses are optimally played if the opponent attacks second action. So, what the opponent usually wants to do is either just attack your first action and maneuver away, which is of course quite hard against a ranged fighter, but if they can force adjacent to say as a melee fighter or a ranged themselves, it works quite good. Or just attack with a pirate. Um, in that case, yeah, sure, you get your strong effects still, but at least you didn't waste any cards um, yourself. So, yeah, it's definitely quite interesting game of initiative and positioning with her always. But yeah, um, where the wind blows is just decent overall, three value block, and yeah, depending on the situation, drawing two can be nice, or getting a pirate back instantly can also be good. And then we get into uh, a block card. Um, I have them ordered a bit weirdly in this deck, <laughs> because I played around a bit with uh, which cards I actually wanted to be what. Um, it's a zero value block. Boost value 4, two copies, it's I'm invis invincible. Immediately return your opponent's card back into their hand. They choose a different card to play instead. Cancel the effects of the new card and ignore its value. Wow. So this card basically just says, like, I'm invisible. I'm invincible. Well, you're not taking damage. Let's say a drug is attacking with a beast form. Um, you say... Nope, return it to your hand, play something else, and then you cancel the effects of that new card and ignore its value. Now, it has to be a different card. So, they cannot choose the same card again. So, optimally, what you want to do is actually play this against Regroup, for example. Because if Regroup is played, they cannot choose Regroup to be the card that gets basically full ignored with, and cancelled, but they have to pick something different, something better. Whereas if you play this maybe against Bigfoot's Lock, yeah, sure, he will just get the Lock back to end and then play a Regroup against this, and then the Regroup is, regroup is ignored, but he still has the Lock, if you get what I mean. So, it's really funny, because you want to play this insanely strong block against the worst card possible. So, yeah. <laughs> um... That's quite strong, but uh, it just means you take no damage on one turn. It can be quite nice for you, but yeah, it's basically just the safety mechanism of the deck that you just don't get run all over. And yeah, for that, it's quite good. And then let's get into the last two normal combat cards. First, we have a one value versatile, um, three boost value, two copies. It's the pirate hating Uta. Um, after combat, do one damage to the opposing fighter for each pirate in their zone. So, this of course can be a lot of ping damage. Technically, there are four pirates, so this could be up to four damage. Um, of course, if you play this yourself while the pirates are under your control, um, it's very, very, very telegraphed. If you just move them all into the opposing fighter's zone, then Uta attacks them herself, 
I mean, yeah, it's very, very telegraphed. They could still play a movement effect to move out of there. But it's more so thought as a kind of punish if the opponent is just camping with their pirates in their own zone and not putting them in any danger so you don't get them. Um, so you attack the opposing fighter and then can deal up to four damage to them um, just because they were camping with the pirates. So it definitely incentivizes them to go in themselves. Um with the pirates and risk them at some point um, because otherwise they will just take massive ping again of course they can still play a movement defense or whatever but uh, yeah it's definitely quite the big threat and then we have uh, a quite similar card just kind of the opposite um, we have another one of value versatile boost layer two two copies it is for a new era um, after combat recover health equal to the amount of pirates you control in your zone so this one is basically not dealing damage, but healing, and that's yourself in your zone, but it has to be the pirates under your control, so it's not just pirates in general. Um, of course, this can be technically for healing yourself, but since you're playing this um, card yourself with Uta, you're either attacking with it, which means you didn't attack with a pirate, so you kind of lost some value there, um, and you didn't attack big, so you're not dealing any damage. And if you play it as a defense, well, it's only one one value well versatile, so you might either just die over it, or if you don't, yeah, you still take a lot of damage, and then sure, you heal a bit, but um, technically can be 5 value block in that way, but usually it won't be, because um, either there are only... Uh, so many pirates in your control um, or there are only so many pirates in your zone both of which are limiting factors to kind of limit this healing but i mean usually get one or two healing off from this card each um so yeah it is okay but definitely one of the more useless cards may i say in the deck that you more often boost away than actually playing and then let's get into the schemes We're almost done um First off, we have a two-copy scheme with a booster of three, it's Shank's daughter. Return all defeated pirates to any spaces in an opposing fighter's zone. They start under that fighter's player's that fighter's player control. Yeah. Ah it's a, this card is I didn't really know how to word this quite good, but so it's a bit weird. But yeah, so you just return all defeated pirates um to any spaces in um, in an opposing fighter zone, so you just put them all back, if all four were defeated, you put them maybe all in their zone, and then they start under that fighter's player control. So, yeah, I, I, mean, I hope you get what that means. Um, basically, the player of that fighter gets to control them, so yeah, there's no confusion in that. Um, and it's the fighter that you chose. So if they, if you're maybe playing a free fall and there are multiple opposing fighters in the same zone, you choose one fighter and in that fighter's zone you put them on, then that fighter's player gets to control them. So yeah, um, in one v one it's not that complicated, but yeah, um, getting them all back can be quite good for you because of course your cards have way more to do them with, with them than the opponent's cards because of course the opponent has a completely different deck. Um, but again, they start in your opponent's control, so if you put them back, you'll have to know exactly when, because if the opponent gets too much value from them, um, it will be quite bad for you, because your cards on their own are not really uh, there to deal with many one-half sidekicks, so you have to somehow uh, find a way to control them again quite early um, after you play this. So yeah, it can be pretty good if you get it, and then get all four pirates back yourself, but yeah, it definitely requires some good setup and you'll have to know when to actually play it. It is also a passive fatigue, so that can be important. But um, I mean, usually the game doesn't last that long for her. Um, then next, again, two copy scheme, three books value, it's Uta Utonomi. Um, move each opposing fighter up to two spaces, then take control of all pirates in your zone. Now, this is probably the most reliable way to... Uh, kind of get your pirates if they are under your opponent's control from the effect it's basically a remote control from tesla without the action gain but then you get all pirates so moving each opposing fighter up to two spaces is of course quite good for, mo for mobility um they can still position around it but since they will usually have so many fighters including the pirates there will be some that won't be fully protected from this um and then just 
instantly taking control of them is of course quite nice um just to guarantee that you actually have some and can play with them just a good color of all again pass and fatigue so that makes four total passes um which can be quite influential but as you saw before her blocks are quite quite shit let's be honest um so yeah and then last one we get another two scopy scheme with a boost way of three it is world's greatest musician um recover two health if there are at least two pirates under your control in uta's zone also draw two cards so healing two on its own is definitely appreciated in a deck like this with lower ish health and well quite the low block values um and then i mean the card draw uh it's okay but usually you try to avoid it because if you have at least two pirates you're usually maneuvering drawing a card then attacking with the pirates meaning you don't spend cards from your own hand so your hand count will just increase so you don't need the extra draw um but of course there can be situations where you got pressured a lot um on the last turn and then you still need to draw but yeah again this can be a pass and fatigue it can be um but yeah so that would be Uta. She is definitely one of, if not the most difficult fighter to play as um, that I ever made, because she requires so much knowledge with positioning and all of the decks and what actually you attack with at what point when you try to go in yourself because your hand is starting to fill up or do you just play for a good old value game with all the pirates when do you actually use which deck and whatever. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it for newer players to pick her up, but if you're more so like used to uh, the controller type of unmatched fighters, if you like something like, I don't know, Injin, Yen, but want a new spin on things, it can definitely be, definitely be really fun to play as or against her, um, just because it's a fully new mechanic um, that you have to play around. Um, and yeah, the opponent also gets some extra things to do, so it will also be fun for them, at least usually. So yeah, I definitely dec recommend it, but that would be it for me. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Bye bye.